Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh in Hong Kong with another another episode of the THD podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we have a company from uh, Copenhagen called Gras, and they do uh, test microphones. And they're owned by a larger company that does all kinds of things in test and measurement. So uh, we're going to be talking to them about a new product they have. But first, let's not forget our sponsor, the Alti Association. And they'll be uh, hosting the Alti Expo in Orlando, Florida on June 11th to 13th. So we encourage anybody that happens to be close or willing to travel, please go check that out. Uh, it will be a great event to uh, learn all about the different Alti members and their products and such. So without delay, let's get into the discussion here. So Simon joining us from Japan. How are you this afternoon, Simon? Pretty good, mate. Thanks a lot. And uh, Remy Guastavino, the Director of Product uh, Management from Grass. How are you this morning <laughs> in Copenhagen? I'm good, thank you. All right. So yeah, I think all of our viewers know the importance of having consistent and quality mics in their production test environment. And uh, I think Gross does mics for all kinds of testing, but I think today we're going to we're going to talk about perhaps the the greater but maybe uh, focused on this new product. So um maybe introduce yourself and then we'll get into the discussion on the the Gross and the product. Yes, my, my name is Remy uh, Gustavino. Um, I've been working for Gras for, for two years now. Uh, prior to that, I've been working for Broden Care, which was also a microphone manufacturer for 12 years, both in uh, research and development, but also in product management, and I've been working on smart sensor. Mm. Okay, thanks for joining us. And maybe just to help spoon feed our customers, we can uh, jump directly into presentation and kind of walk them through the topic. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah, so we'll spoke about this new Grass AQ40 PM production mi microphone that we've been working on for the past two years. Mm -hmm. A bit about me, but I, I've done it already, so <laughs> I could I could jump over this one. So why is it so hard to perform acoustic measurement? I've been working with acoustic for the past 20 years. And I, if I had to, to give a number, which is that 70 to 80% of the measurement that people are performing are, are not valid, are not do well. So mm. I would try to, to help them measuring better. That was my way of doing it and then i've been trying to focus on on the user centric approach mm -hmm. and there's two places to start you could start on on the user how is he doing how is he choosing his microphone or you could look at the measurement chain uh, the user is maybe something more for for university to teach or on a company it's not we're not providing uh, measurement lecture where well, we can help them measuring, but but it's not what we do. Mm -hmm. So we work on the measurement chain. If you look at a classical measurement chain, you've got the microphone, then you've got an audio analyzer, and then you've got some kind of PC and, and software, and maybe some, some cables. But if mm -hmm. you change your PC, or if you change your software, if you look at measurement uncertainty, it, it doesn't mean almost anything because you get some small different if you're using different algorithm, but usually it's it's pretty stable. If you look at the uh, sound card or audio analyzer, if you have something that is of, of good quality, then it doesn't mean anything that's extremely stable, extremely linear. So that's not where we should work. But if you look at the microphone, all microphone measurement microphone or production microphone have a sensitivity that is within plus minus two dB and that a frequency range that can differ up to three dB plus minus yeah. three dB. So this is this is where we could make a difference. This is this is a place where you could optimize a measurement chain. Mm -hmm. And then we had two just two two kind of microphone production line microphone where cost is a key 
decision factor where often the people using this microphone are not specially trained in acoustic. They rely on an acoustic engineer. Mm -hmm. And usually that, that it's not so often that they are playing correction. They just take the microphone as it is. Sometimes if, if they are good enough or if they take the time to do it, if it's important for them, they can set the sensitivity or, or read tests if they've got a tests enable uh, user interface. Mm -hmm. But they are almost never correct for for frequency response. Only a few companies do that. And then you've got measurement microphones that are used in the lab, where the, the quality is a key decision factor, where the user is usually highly trained, and they are playing correction manually or with the help of a software. So so we we've that's why we decided to focus on production line microphone, that's where we could make the biggest uh, difference. Uh, and typically, you've got some, some really short um, measurement chain. And you're testing some simple device like a, a, a speaker, a smart speaker, a mobile phone, some headset. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the key decision factor when you're choosing a microphone on a production line is a cost. So People have been using production line microphone because they are an order of, of magnitude uh, cheaper than a classical microphone, measurement microphone. Mm -hmm. And this is, I've extracted 100 frequency response from a database from production line microphone. If you look at it, if you look at the sensitivity, so that's, a, that's something that would measure at 250 Hertz. That's yeah. You, you've got a spread that is within plus minus uh, maybe a two dB. And if uh, you look, is, uh, sorry, maybe this is the microphone from the factory uh, uh, measured at fraction. Yeah, the microphone. exactly. Yeah. That, mm. That's what we get from the factory. Okay. And and if you look at the frequency response, you've got some microphones that have a big peak on the high frequency. Some microphones that are more flat. Some have a big belly there. So if you don't apply correction, you've got a, a measurement uncertainty that is huge, especially mm -hmm. in the high frequency range. So that's that's really difficult. And that's what we, we've been trying to address. How can we help people in position like making better measurement? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, they need a better sensor, but cost is really uh, a, a, a decision factor. And, and we've got some constraint. We, we need it to keep the analog output because they want something that is backward compatible. They don't want to change uh, all the measurement setup. They just want a better microphone. We also need to, to keep the form factor. Many, many people on the production line are, are using this uh, this kind of array microphone that are 34 millimeter long and seven millimeter diameter. So they don't want something bigger or smaller, they want the same size. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing for us is there's a lot of new technologies that are available, that are affordable, and that they are so small that we could put them into this microphone. So if you look at it, this microphone is unchanged on the outside. It's got also an analog output. It's got the same stick, the same size, the same microphone, but we were able to incorporate a small microprocessor inside mm -hmm. the preamplifier. So we've got a, an analog input. It's a condenser microphone. And then inside the microphone, we apply some kind of, of digitalization. Then we mm -hmm. can equalize the microphone to make it flat. And then we can also set the gain. So all microphones have the same sensitivity. So mm -hmm. which means that you've got a flat microphone with a constant gain out of the box. And that's really important because it helps the customer cut his cuts. Because you could 
it's you've got a really fast setup. Mm -hmm. If something breaks, you can just exchange a microphone, put a new one. You reduce measurement uncertainties, you measure, reduce measurement complexity, and you can use the exact same interface that you've been using before. Um, usually, if we come back to this 100 production line microphone, you got them out of the box, it looks like this. And then you should individually adjust sensitivity. So one way of doing it, if you've got a test enable user interface uh, analyzer, but then it's, it's really expensive and it takes time to, to read all this uh, chip inside the microphone to get the sensitivity. And if you don't have a test enable analyzer, then, then you should manually type in sensitivity and then you always there's a risk you're making a mistake. But the worst part is doing equalization because you've got 100 different equalization curve and you should have a software that support equalizing a microphone. So that's really difficult. This is a population of 100 of this new AQ mm -hmm. for TPM microphone using AQ set out of the box. So no. Uh, individually sensitivity adjustment, no equalization needed. So if you look at your measurement uncertainties, they are going much, much smaller. That's a big plus. Mm. And that's really important, especially on the production line, because you limit the failed failure. So if you've got a, a good product, but you're measuring it with a microphone that is, for example, underestimating high frequency, then a good product could be classified as bad and, and you should have to, to trash it or to, to rework it. Mm -hmm. But the worst is if you've got a bad product, but because yeah, you're does. not measuring yeah. in the right way, it passes. And then you're sending a bad unit to a customer and that's not something you want to do. Yeah, especially if it's a driver factory and they respond, they're sending that the driver on to final assembly, and then it's it gets rejected at final assembly, or even worse, it goes into the assembly, and then the final user might reject it, and then it the costs amplify as it gets further down the the supply chain. I agree. Yeah. So so it, it's really a a huge help to have a consistent measurement with, with small uncertainties. Mm -hmm. And if you, yeah, that's, that's some kind of random curve I took from this 100 microphone. If, this, if you're measuring this one as a big uh, bump uh, on the high frequency, and the black one uh, is going down, so you've got more than 2 dB difference between the microphone, that, that's not something you want when you're measuring. You want small and mm -hmm. So the pain customer pain solve it that you don't get different uh, results using different microphone because your uncertainties are so small because the microphone is, is flat. Um, this microphone is an order of magnitude more stable than classical uh, production line microphone. We've been working really hard on this new sensor element and, and it's 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 really stable, which means that you don't have to compensate for for temperature or humidity or static pressure on the production line because of the stability of the sensing element. Mm -hmm. You don't have long setup, so you have much shorter setup time and, and replacement time, and time is, is money on a production line. So we want to be able to do things quickly. then you, your microphone is so flat that you doesn't have an impact on your measurement uncertainties. That's it's it's much better. And then we were able to because we don't have to spend we spend a lot of time normally to tune the microphone response. But this one we, we can tune it and then then compensate for for all imperfection. So it's much faster uh manufacturing 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm curious about one thing, if you don't mind, um, uh, the uh, curve shape for the microphone. Yeah. Uh, we pack up a few slides. Um, is that the uh, underlying characteristic of the microphone or is that uh, a, a, a characteristic of the way that it's measured? This is a, a microphone. Okay. And so then uh, when you're uh, uh, equalizing the microphones, you know in advance the ideal uh, microphone characteristic, the microphone shape that you uh, equalize yeah. into. Yeah. Yeah. Is- is that like a, a taking as a kind of a mean of production or is it developed in another way? Yeah, so 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 we we're, we're working on on making it flat but but if you boost it to, or cut it too much and you you've got some repercussion on noise floor or on on THD. Mm-hmm. So 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 it's it's the mix up of the thing we can do we want to equalize it so so it's it's extremely flat between 20 and 10 kilohertz yeah and and, th- and then we cannot boost it too much because then it will have a, an impact on THD and, and we don't want that sure and um then uh there's, there's a little bump around 10k right at the top of, of the range yeah. and um is there uh you don't want to equalize that to perfectly flat or is, is there a constraint around doing that Oh, it, it it's a it's a small bump, but but if if you look at the scale, it's also small, uh, extremely small scale. So this yeah. this microphone is within plus minus 0.5 dB from 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz. Oh, I see. So okay. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's plus two minus three. Usually, when you see a a frequency response, it's the plus 10 minus 10, or mm. so it's it's an extremely zoomed range. I, I, I use. No, I understand that. I understand that. Um, I was just curious, for, partly from the point of view of saying that uh, if uh, the users have already got a system where they're expecting this uh, 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 exact microphone characteristic, you wouldn't actually attempt to uh, uh, equalize, say, around the 10K point down by a point something of a dB because that would make it a different microphone. Is that... Uh, yeah, we can, we can do that, but... Again, it, it's a it's a production line microphone, so mm. it it optimizes on on cost, mm. uh, like the equivalent. Uh, if you take a, a Graz forty PK or a Bonenkair forty nine fifty eight, so which was the older generation of, of measurement microphones, they are plus minus three dB, and a plus minus two between fifty and and ten K. Mm. So so we we we've been crushing this this uncertainties from uh, plus minus two let's say if if um from plus minus two to plus minus yeah. zero point five yeah and then if if you need something better after ten kilohertz then maybe you should use a, a measurement microphone because this this microphone is a an order of magnitude cheaper than a measurement microphone so so you yeah. you, you cannot you cannot get it all. <laughs> can't have everything <laughs> yeah okay and then so another part oh. of the design that you mentioned is um uh, is uh, trying to make the microphone stable um and yeah. uh, that includes meaning stable over a long period of time it does we, we, we've been we've got some some things in that we've been working on for more than two years and that's that uh, mm-hmm. they didn't change sense sensitivity or frequency response if you're looking at older generation uh, production like microphone only if you look at that the humidity that could move more than plus minus one one db in sensitivity because it's humid or because it's warm and then, then they've, they've got this uh, hysteresis so they don't come back to the same level yeah and it takes time so you've got this time constant it, it's it's a uh, it's 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 very really difficult it, this microphone is, if you ask me, it's it's a much much better microphone. Uh, and uh, do you think a lot of your customers uh, do a regular uh, calibration check, or many actually don't bother? I think it, it's depending. If you're talking about high-end uh, audio yeah. devices, then maybe they're looking at doing more calibration. But I can also see that the 
quality of audio devices, of headphones and headset and mobile phone is rapidly increasing. And, and the price is also not moving so much. It's increasing, but not, not yet. So I think that the audio world really need a, a better production microphone mm. because mm. you've got so much. Uh, I mean, if you're buying a, a really expensive headset that costs uh, seven hundred dollars, then you expect it to sound good, and then they've got some fancy microphone that they should match, and then you need to have a, a reference microphone that is stable and like a, a good sensitivity, so you could adjust your your microphone. So I really think this is needed. And I should say the first reaction from our customer is is ex extremely happy about it, and then everybody yeah. Yeah. asks if they could test it, and have we been sending some some so many samples that we don't. We have to produce more now. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. So so what what did I learn, or what, what did we learn? We learned that um, the measurement one on production line is is very conservative. So. If something is is working, you shouldn't change it, and that's why we, we had to, this constraint about size and about uh, plug and 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 way of powering your microphone. Mm -hmm. We can also see that in twenty twenty three, most used acoustic sensor are still analog. Nobody is using digital sensor. Yeah, at the beginning, I was really preaching for for. A, kind of USB sensor or a Wi-Fi sensor, but people are not ready to do that yet. And that's why we, we decided to to incorporate all this technology and, and inside the preamplifier, but still use the analog output. Mm -hmm. But then we also show that we could make a, a real difference to for the user by, by incorporating this new digital technology in an analog sensor. And and it is a first step on a, on the acoustic sensor technology measurement microphone. Mm -hmm. Have been pretty much like the development of the measurement microphone have been been so exciting for the last twenty years, let's say. So so yeah. this one is a first step, and then we've got a lot of new ideas that that we will apply to to microphone. And. Like I, if you should remember something is that we've been working on this microphone to ease the the use the user to, to, to reduce measurement uncertainties so that people can focus on the measurement, focusing on the thing they're doing and, and forget about microphone techniques. Mm. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, one more, one more quick question. We, uh, we've talked to, uh, it's mostly what you've talked about is focused on uh, the uh, consistency of the microphone. Um, can you comment a little bit on uh, some of the other characteristics, dynamic range, uh, noise floor, and things like that? So some uh, some quick fact about it. It's a it's a twenty kilohertz uh, pressure field microphone. It's extremely price competitive compared to to a measurement microphone. It's a CCP or ICP or CCLD powered, so so it works for for any microphone sound card. But it's also designed so you can use it directly on a 48 volt phantom power uh, sound card, and mm. that's really interesting because you don't have to set sensitivity because it they are alike, and and you don't have to correct for frequency range, so you could have a a measurement chain consisting of a two hundred dollars audio sound card, a cable, and and your microphone. So you could have a, a measurement chain with extremely low uncertainties for the fraction of a price you will pay for a classical measurement chain. Mm. Uh, so it's specific. It's thirty-four millimeter long. It's seven millimeter uh, wide. It's a uh, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz. The pressure response is within plus minus 0.5 dB, 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz, and then 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz plus minus 2 dB. Mm -hmm. The sensitivity is 25 millivolt per pascal plus minus 0.2 dB. So that's also usually it's plus minus maybe 2 or 3 dB. 
So we go all the way to 0.2 because we can correct for gain. The noise flow is lower than 30 dBA. The acoustic overlock point is higher than 120 dB SPL with less than 3% THT. And the environmental stability is better than 0.3 dB. And what I mean by that is if on a, on a normal production line, you can assume that the temperature will be between 15 degrees Celsius and, and maybe 40 degrees Celsius and the, the the barometric pressure won't change more than plus minus 30 hectopascal and uh, it, it won't be raining inside. So if you put all this uh, parameter together, the sensibility won't change more than 0.2 dB. That's what we, mm. that's where we are. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> So it's a it's a really nice and I'm so proud of this microphone. We we managed to achieve extremely good specs. Uh, uh, can I ask also just uh, um the uh, the front housing uh, and the previous microphone you showed it has the uh, metal grill with uh, a lot of slots in it. I don't know we call that. But this yeah. one has a slightly different design. Is there something to that? Is that a you know? yeah? It's it's because you're using this microphone really often to to measure um, maybe a, an, an iPad speaker or to measure to measure a men's microphone on a on a mobile phone, and then if you're measuring a, a, a small a small microphone or a small speaker, you you don't want to measure it with a um, with a huge uh, sensor. So so as a rule of rule of thumb. You should you always use a sensor that is in the same dimension or smaller than the thing you're measuring. So so we we have this new uh, optimized uh, sound port here that that is really mm -hmm. well suited to measuring small stuff really close by. Okay. So it, it, you kind of hinted that you've been sampling that already. Is it and uh, so is it in mass production yet, or is it that coming soon? What's the timeline for people to start ordering this for their factories? Yeah, so 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 we are mass producing it now. Okay. Uh, we had a pre-production series, but all the samples have been sent to to companies that want to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. But we. We, I think we will be delivering in a, in, a, in a week. We will have some a new batch coming, and, and then it will be much, much production. Okay. All right. Very good. And uh, Simon, did you have any more questions? I think I got everything I wanted here. Yeah. Got everything <laughs> in already? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let me think. Uh, so, yeah, ready to ship. Um yeah, I'm not sure. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, Remy, before we uh, wrap this up? No, I think we've got a lot of good information. And uh, yeah, I think those messages that we, we made a, a price competitive microphone. Is that it, can, can, can we set, like, we don't, if you can tell numbers, great. If not, can you talk like, a you know, percentage less than uh than than like the your predecessor microphone of similar. Yeah, so so it's it's on the same price range as the classical uh production line microphone. Mm -hmm. So the, the price is almost unchanged, and it will be um it's around the third of a price of, of a measurement microphone, right? With almost the same kind of specs, right? The, the dynamic range is a bit smaller, but you can measure anywhere up to 120. So it's not it's enough not for the, consumer products. Exactly. Okay. So if if you don't have to go super high frequency or super low noise flow or super high SPL, it's a perfect microphone. Okay. All right. Well, we'll put uh, some links to the product in the description below, and we encourage people to check that out. And uh, of course, like everybody, like, subscribe, uh, whether you're Spotify, YouTube, Rumble, or Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to this or watching it, um, please give us a like. We appreciate that. And 
Remy, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, thank Simon you. always, Simon always with his uh, curveball questions there. That's always fun. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next time, everybody. Thank you.